seat at the table just waiting for you So come on inside 90.9 The Vine in conjunction with Ariasports.net proudly presents The Sports Couch The Sports Couch is the area's only locally produced weekly sports show that is live on FM radio and also streamed live on both of our websites at areasports.net and wbyn.org. Who will be on the couch this morning? Let's find out. The Sports Couch is on the air right now. And good morning again, sports fans. Welcome to another edition of the Sports Couch live on a Saturday morning. Yeah, we are just about to march madness. We've already had some madness in postseason play. A lot of regional championships played around the area last night. I'm Randy Olson along with Danny Anselman. We saw uh, quite a game here in Wayne City. A big, big crowd as uh, Woodlawn punched their ticket to the 1A sectional after beating Thompsonville. But, Danny, there was a lot of interesting games around Southern Illinois last night, wasn't there? Yeah, you know, uh, there was a lot of teams went home pretty elated, and there were several went home heartbroken last night. And uh, some upsets, too, and we're going to get into those in just a moment in our scoreboard, which you can also check out on our website. Big show today. We're going to have uh, five coaches on the show. We may even add a sixth one if uh, we hear back from him. But we got five coaches lined up already for the show, and there are five guys that all were big winners last night, Danny. First of all, uh, Coach Scott McElravey of the Fairfield Mules. They won a regional last night, and they are 31-2. and two. They'll move on now to the 2A sectional as they continue their storybook season. Uh, Brian Gamber, the coach of the Woodlawn Cardinals, will join us to talk about their big win last night over Thompsonville. And uh, they moved to 25-5 and five with that win. Shane Garner and the Cesar Valier, uh, Red Devils, they had uh, uh, quite a game last night. Went to, what, double overtime? That's one of the teams that went home heartbroken. <laughs> oh, man, I'll tell you. We'll uh, talk to Coach Garner about that. Also, uh, Wayne Harry of the Nashville Hornets. They kept their steamroller going last night as they defeated Trenton Westland to win a regional championship. They'll move on to the sectional. And Coach Doug Creel, the Mount Vernon Rams, will join us. They wrapped up their regular season last night in 3A basketball by winning on the road at Cahokia. And they did something kind of improbable this week, Danny. They, they beat Cahokia at home in Mount Vernon on Wednesday night, turned around two nights later, traveled to Cahokia last night, beat them again on the road, had to win both those games to share a conference championship, but they did. They pulled it off, and congratulations to Doug Creel and the Rams. They share the conference championship in the South 7 with Belleville Altoff. Yeah, you know, that's quite a feat. That South 7's uh, quite a conference there, Randy, and uh, to play those teams, that was supposed to be a Tuesday Friday, which would have been bad enough. Then mm-hmm. it got pushed back to a Wednesday Friday. Right. And uh, the only thing worse than that was uh, last week when Hamilton County played Johnson City on uh, yeah. Wednesday night yeah. on a makeup deal. And then they had to move it up because of incoming weather mm-hmm. and they played on Thursday night. Uh, that's right. Yeah, that's kind of the same kind of deal. But you talk about that South 7 Conference, and, you know, you think about the good teams that Mount Vernon's had over the past 20 years, and there's been a lot of really good Mount Vernon Ram teams the last 20 years. Do you realize that this is the first team in 20 years to win or share the conference championship? No. Yeah. It's been 1999 since the Kent Williams days that the Rams have won the South 7 Conference. That's hard to believe because there's been a number of 20-win seasons and and really good teams, but that league is just so difficult. And the proof of the pudding on that is you take a look at last year when you had the Marion Wildcats finish fourth in the South 7 Conference, but they went all the way to the Super Sectional Elite 8 in 3A basketball. Yeah, you know, uh, and if Central, you could have got by Marion last Mm -hmm. night who won a double overtime, you'd had a three-way share. Had a three-way tie. That's right. So, Again, winning that league is uh, is very, very difficult. You can't take it for granted. And whenever you do win the South 7 Conference, you want to uh, you want to enjoy that. So we've got five coaches, like I say, on the show with us this morning. We've got a message out to a sixth one who also won a regional last night who we may hear back from. And if so, we'll try to squeeze him on as, uh, as well. And, uh, in fact, I think he may be uh, calling on my cell phone right now. Uh, But I need him to text me because we can't put him on the air from our cell phone. So we'll try that here in just a second. But, uh, Danny, if you want to run through the scores, we'll get our first coach on the air. All right. At Harrisburg last night, uh, Fairfield Mules defeat Carmine 70-56. At Shelbyville, uh, Pena comes on and beats Marshall 72-71. 
and nobody was expecting those two teams. Uh, they was expecting one of them, but uh, earlier in the week, Pena beat uh, Casey Westfield in an upset, so they punched their ticket to the Vandalia sectional at Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel took care of Red Hill, 53-36. At Effingham, St. Anthony, T-Town defeats St. Anthony, 58-33, so that'll set up a T-Town Mount Carmel game on Wednesday night from the Vandalia sectional. At AJ, Pinckneyville 55, Anna Jonesboro 39. At Piazza Southwest, Alton Marquette 44, Greenville 40. At Carlisle, Nashville beats Trenton Westland 45 to 30. At Chester, West Frankfurt goes over to Chester, and Chester had been on a pretty big roll, and West Frankfurt comes away with a 54 38 victory last night. In 1A championships at Wayne City, Woodlawn beat Thompsonville 58 to 40. At Hardin County, Gallatin County beat Hardin County 64-52. At Sesser, Sesser beat Steelville 62-59 in two overtimes. At the Goreville Regional, Cairo 74, Goreville 71. At St. Elmo, St. Elmo beat Altamont 56-53. At Neoga, Nakoma 60, Neoga 31. At Odin, Odin 36, South Central 21. At Edinburgh, Moeka with Central A&M 70, Buffalo Tri-City 43. At Marissa, Coulterville, they had had a great season over there, but the Oakville Rockets ended last night 52-51, and that would have been a mm. that would have been a hard hard loss, I'm yeah. sure, for them. Marissa's one of the teams that beat Woodlawn <clears throat> this year, too. At Hardin-Calhoun, Madison beat Hardin-Calhoun 66-54. And in regular season games, Mount Vernon beat Cahokia 68-52, Marion over Centralia in double overtime 67-61, and the Salem Wildcats are playing some pretty good basketball. They thumped the Benton Rangers last night 60-46. to Yeah, and Salem uh, has a good chance to win that regional that they're hosting next week. They really do. And this will be their final year of 3A. They'll be 2A next year. So, And Benton will be, too, as a matter of fact. Right. Yeah. Yep. All right. So you can check out all those scores from those regional championships, like I said, on our sports website at areasports.net. If you just tuned in and you missed any of those, just check it out on the website. As Danny said, at the Harrisburg Class 2A Regional Championship last night, Fairfield Mules punched their ticket to the sectional. They beat Carmi Bulldogs for the fourth time this year. Beat them last night 70-56. to Mules improved to 31-2 and on the season. Again, that school record just keeps getting bigger and bigger all the time. And joining us right now is a smiling coach, Scott McElravey of the Mules. Good morning, Coach. How'd you know I was smiling? I just had a feeling you would be. I mean, you're a regional champion this morning. You if, you're, if you're not happy this morning, you need to go back to bed. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew you weren't going to take anything for granted last night, even though you'd beaten Carmi three times in double figures. You still had to go down and take care of business last night, and you had to do it without getting anybody hurt. And so those are all concerns when you go into a regional championship game. There is, and I think Carmine's really improved. You know, they have, uh, you know, they're a lot like Albion. They've got some big kids inside that have gotten a lot better. You know, they're a young team that's gotten better. Uh, and, you know, they they play a style of defense where they, they're more like pack line and, and, and don't get up in the passing lanes and that sort of thing. So, you know, we, we started out there giving us a lot of three open threes, and we had some kids step up and, uh, I think we're up 15 at the end of the first quarter. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, that's another good start for your Mules last night. But I think you're right. I think Carmi did improve towards the end of the season, and obviously they beat El Dorado in the semifinals, so they had to play a good game there. So, uh, But the main thing is your Mules took care of business last night, and, and you're moving on, and, and that's what the goal was. Yeah, and like you said earlier, beating the team four times is tough. Uh, it doesn't matter you know what the opponent is on the other side. It's, it's, that's a tough thing to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if uh, there's ever been a time uh, in history that the Mules have beaten the Carmi Bulldogs four times in one season. I, that's probably a first. Yeah, and, you know, uh, the last regional championship we had, you know, we beat Harrisburg, and they had beaten us three times. Mm. You know, so that was kind of a good talking point with our kids. Yeah. Oh, and, hey, we're on the opposite side of things this time. Uh, you know, so just keep your head down and, and stay focused, and they really were. Uh, mm-hmm. Coach Burke told me, he went individually around to the kids before the game, asking if they're nervous and whatnot. And you know, to a guy, they were not. You know, I think a lot of the the tournament championship games and whatnot throughout the year prepared us for it, and so they're they're really excited to go to Vandalia where we go each summer. 
Yeah, and uh, that's what's coming up on Tuesday night. The Mules will be in Vandalia at the Class 2A Boys Sectional, and your opponent will be somebody that none of us really saw coming, and that's the Pena Panthers. As they're the Cinderella this year in 2A as they won the championship last night over Marshall. So were you surprised by all of that with Pena being there? We were we were really surprised. You know, we, we were playing uh, Harrisburg the night that Casey was upset. So right after we got done, you know, I had people streaming down before I could even get to the radio saying, hey, Pena just beat Casey, uh, which was a huge surprise. Even to people who had played them, played both teams, uh, you know, Pena's really got it going right now. Uh, it's going to be a fun game. We, we've got some early film on them and some talk, and uh, they love to push the ball, they love to press, and they like to shoot a lot of threes. So, uh, you know, comparatively... Uh, kind of sounds like the Fairfield places. Mules. Well, some days we do shoot threes and some days we don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I've got kids that can do it. Um, they're a lot like Lawrenceville. I mean, of the teams that we've played this year, you know, Lawrenceville's athletic. Mm-hmm. So they like to get up and down the floor and, and press and whatnot. So if I had to do an early comparison, that's what I would say with Pena. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, uh, some people, again, are surprised that Pena is there. But when you really step back and you take a long look at it and you see that conference that they're in, that South Central Conference, they were 6-3 and three in their league, and I think they were in fourth in that league out of the ten teams. But we know from football and we know from basketball that the South Central Conference is a tough league. Yeah, there's some bigger schools that are a little bigger. You know, you've got a mixture, really, I think, in football. They go anywhere from 2A to 4A, I believe. Mm-hmm. I think Greenville participated in 4A football. Maybe known a little more for football over the years, but they've had some really, really good basketball schools as well. You know, um, you know we're excited. It's, it's kind of neat playing a different team. You know, we've a lot of years in the summer matched up against them at Vandalia in uh, their summer shootouts. We haven't the last couple, so I can't tell you a lot about you know their individual guys yet. But uh, we'll be ready. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, I think uh, one of their players uh, is a sophomore that is the son of a player that was on their 1988 state champion team. Uh, and I think I, I think he's an assistant yes. coach for them. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I did know that. Uh-huh. Uh, and, uh, you know, like I said, when you get to sectionals, you know, whether they're Cinderella team, whether you're looking across and seeing a perennial powerhouse like T-Town or Nashville, it doesn't matter. You know, you got to play your game and, just advance whether that's a one point win or or a 15 Mm -hmm. they all count yeah they do well on the other side of the bracket up there at the vandalia sectional it will be t-town against mount carmel that should be a very interesting matchup as well because the aces have been playing very good basketball down the stretch here yeah my friends up north uh they were surprised when the seeds came out and there's like how did mount carmel get the two seeds with you know a 500 record but you know not having appleby early uh was huge for them um, and then also you know I'm talking about playing uh, in a good conference the Big Eight is nothing like the, S, the you know mm-hmm. the conference or the Black Diamonds conference I mean you're talking about you know schools over a thousand in that so that's what they have to deal with yeah um, through the regular season so those two schools I believe have played each other the last two or three times in sectionals last two or three years in sectionals so that should be a really good game yeah I think it will be so Tuesday night, uh, it's, uh, is that a 7 o'clock tip, I believe, on Tuesday night at Vandalia? Yes, yeah, 7 o'clock tip, and they've, they've sold us no advance ticket sales, which hmm. we're a little disappointed with. But yeah, if, I, I, if I'm feeling right, I think, Vandalia, you better watch out. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of red and black yeah. waiting in line for a ticket. Well, we have already been in contact with the athletic director at Vandalia High School. Our plan is to be there Tuesday night unless the IHSA tells us we can't be. And we have not gotten official word yet on whether we can be there to video stream it or not. But uh, our plan is to be there Tuesday night unless we're told otherwise. But we have been in contact with them, and we hope we can be there. And we look forward to being there because um, the Mules have a chance to continue on and do something uh, really, really special this year. And I know that uh, the guys are up to the task, and they're looking forward to it. Yeah, I think so, too, and, you know, we just have to be ready, and, and we will be. Um, you know, it's, it's been, I think, four years. It, it was neat. A lot of the kids that uh, won regional with us, you know, a few years back, Dakota Young and Lackey and those guys were excited for us. Um, mm-hmm. Nathaniel works in our school now, so right. it's good to talk with him and, and sharing it. That brings back memories from four years ago, too. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, you're right. It, it's going to be fun, and, and I'd say if you hit 
if you see that uh, phone pop up from the ice, just say, just don't answer it, okay? Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll, t- I'll uh, Our mule fans that can't make it, you know, we'll just act like we didn't see the call. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll just uh, forget about that one. But, um, no, it has been uh, quite a fun ride, and we don't want to see it end because, uh, again, I think there's there's more to be done by this Mules team, and I'm sure you're going to be spending the weekend watching game film of the Pena, Pena Panthers and also making some calls to other coaches and stuff to get uh, what you can scouting report-wise on them. We have. We've already done it. We were doing it on the – that was the great thing about having a 50-minute bus trip uh, from Harrisburg. We were gathering stuff on the way back and mm-hmm. talking, and, uh, you know, that's what you do. You know, when you're done, you'll – you know, it's tiring, but it's so, so worth it, and uh, these kids deserve it, too. I said, you know, we'll we'll meet, and we'll have a couple of good practices before paying, and we'll, we'll be ready to go. Well, you'd, be, you'd rather be doing all that than sitting at home not having any other game to look forward to, you know? Absolutely. I totally agree with that. There's so many coaches that would love to trade places with you right now. That's for sure. Yeah, we'll be selfish this year. We're not trading. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. That's right. So no advanced ticket sales. So we'll let all the Mule fans know, no advanced ticket sales. You just got to get there and get there early and get in line and get your ticket and get in there. That's a pretty good-sized gym, though, at Vandalia. It is a nice-sized gym. I mean, it's a lot like um, the Red Hills and Florida. I mean, it's three-sided. You know, it's got one side that's that up, uh, if I remember right. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and you know, they, they're super nice to us in the summer. It, it'll be... You know, not too bad of a trip. I think about an hour and a half. Yeah. You know, that's that's pr- pretty surprising, no advanced ticket sales. that That's kind of unheard of. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that I like it, but, you know, we'll, uh, like I said, good, good luck for them because I think we're going to have a lot of people waiting in line for tickets when they, when they open up those doors. <laughs> we had a great – our fans have been super. They have been, uh, yeah. Last night we had – you know, Harrisburg is a, is a big gym, and we had a lot of red and black there, which we appreciate. The kids really appreciate. Um, mm-hmm. They're just they're a fun group to be around. Yeah. Well, and then uh, also the fact that you guys have been there before in the summertime, you're familiar with the gym, the floor, the surroundings, the lighting. And so that's important because you're not going to be walking to a strange place you've never been to before. Oh, no. Our kids have shot on those rooms a lot. Um, Brian's parents are from there. I believe mom's from Vandalia and dad's mm-hmm. from Ramsey, which is really close. Right. And uh, his grandparents, when they found out it'd be his mom's parents, I believe, were super excited. Yeah. Said, hey, you, you can't, you know, you got to make it to Vandalia. So so we have, and so uh, just really excited. Yeah. Well, Coach, we'll let you go. We appreciate your time this morning, and congratulations on the regional championship last night, and best of luck as you prepare for the game at Vandalia against Payne on Tuesday night, and we uh, look forward to seeing you there. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for the coverage this year. We, we appreciate it. Sure. Bye. Okay. Have a great weekend. Thank you. you. Bye bye. That's Coach Scott McElravey of the Fairfield Mules, and obviously he is elated after winning another regional last night. I believe that's his third since he's been, uh, been at Fairfield. Been at Fairfield, yeah. 31 and 2 on the season. You know, that's a, that's a great run right there in itself. That is pretty amazing. Yeah, it sure is. Well, uh, we did hear back from Coach Jeff Herman of Gallatin County Hawks, and he's going to join us on the show. So we're going to squeeze in one more coach with us this morning. So we'll have six coaches in total. All six were winners last night. Uh, Pretty important games. Five of them were regional winners. And then, of course, uh, the one regular season winner in 3A that we'll be talking to this morning. And coming up next, we're going to visit with Coach Brian Gamber of the uh, victorious Woodlawn Cardinals as they were – Winners last night in the game that we covered against the Thompsonville Tigers. And we will talk to Coach Gamber coming up next here on the Sports Couch. So stay tuned. You've heard the old saying, practice makes perfect. Well, there's actually a lot of truth to that. And you can get one-on-one instruction in baseball, softball, basketball, as well as speed and agility drills at the Sports Zone in Fairfield. The Sports Zone has been in business for quite some time now and has helped many area boy and girl athletes excel in their sport of choice. Lessons and practice times are available at convenient times that meet your schedule. The Sports Zone is located on Delaware Street in Fairfield, and we appreciate their support. Real Life Radio thanks Fairfield Printing and Graphics for their partnership in local Christian radio ministry. Fairfield Printing and Graphics offers custom sizing for banners and signs, as well as yard signs, corrugated signs, and metal signs. Fairfield Printing and Graphics also specializes in custom t-shirts, business cards, wedding invitations, hats, bags, and much more. They are located at number 5 Williamson Drive in Fairfield, and their phone number is 842-4048. 
Are you going out of town for a vacation or a weekend getaway? What are you going to do with your dog? That's easy. There's Jagger's Doggy Daycare in Mount Vernon. Jagger's Doggy Daycare is your one-stop shop for overnight dog boarding, doggy daycare, as well as dog grooming, and obedience dog training. It's your dog's home away from home. and They will thrive, and they'll get one-on-one attention by a great staff. More information is available on the web at jaggersdoggydaycare.com. Jaggers Doggy Daycare, 414 Main Street in Mount Vernon. Welcome back to the Sports Couch. You're live on a Saturday morning on 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine Radio and streaming live worldwide on both of our websites. Live video streaming right now at areasports.net and live audio streaming at wvyn.org. You can also listen to the show, of course, on the free mobile app that you can download from The Vine. And that app is free to all your mobile devices, regardless of what kind of uh, phone that you have. Well, last night in Class 1A Regional Championship at Wayne City, a game that we video streamed live here on Areasports.net, it was the Woodlawn Cardinals jumping out to a 12-0 lead en route to a 58-40 victory over the Thompsonville Tigers. The Cardinals punched their ticket to the sectional next week against Gallatin County at Gallatin County. And joining us on the phone right now is head coach of the Woodlawn Cardinals, Brian Gamber. Good morning, Brian. Hey, good morning. How are you guys? We are doing great, and I'm sure you're happy this morning. That was another big win last night. You improved to 25-5 and five on the season. I know that's always a goal each year is to win a regional and move on, and, and you did it again. And I think that's nine regionals in the last 11 years, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Yeah, I, it, that sounds pretty close to being right. I'm not really sure the exact number, but, um, yeah, I mean, you know, you just – just want to keep pushing forward and you know i told them it's just you know we have another opportunity to keep playing you know we just keep practicing we get another game um and that's all you can hope for this time of year you know last night i mean great atmosphere that place was packed oh yeah Mm -hmm. um you know council's had an incredible year they've got a really good basketball team um and our guys you know thankfully for us i mean we came out i felt like we really guarded them well especially to start the game of course we made some shots early um, and that always helps, kind of took their crowd out of it. Um, and then, you know, we were just able to kind of keep our composure. And, and uh, you know, it got, I don't want to say chippy, but, you know, it, it kind of got physical and there were some things that, that happened. And so we just tried to tell our guy, you know, you just got to keep playing. Um, just keep plugging along and stay in the moment and keep guarding and rebounding. Um, and we really felt like if we did that, we would give ourselves a chance to win. And I, I really thought, and especially in the third quarter, I thought we came out and, and really kind of, you know, set the tone and kind of finish them off. Um, and it all started on the defense, and then we really guarded well, one through five. You know, I mean, I can't pick just one guy. I really felt like our whole team guarded well. And, um, you know, on the glass, Jake was a monster on the glass. Yeah, he night. was. You know, they yep. got a six, six, seven kid who, um, you know, he, he can get a lot of offensive rebounds, a lot of stick backs. But, you know, Jake just, I mean, he went at him, and he went and got the glass. And, um, again, when you do those things, you're going to give yourself a chance to win. But great high school basketball atmosphere, um, and I hope people don't take things away from Thomasville because you go 30 and three, uh, you've done a lot of really good things. And so, you know, sometimes you know if you don't win a regional, you feel like the season's a loss. They should not feel that way. They should be proud of what they accomplished. Yeah, Coach, you know, uh, I thought one of the keys to the game was the rebounding. Your team did not let Thompsonville have any second chance opportunities i mean you can probably count them on one hand if i sit back and look at look at the game at the second chance yeah. opportunities they had and uh it was just a pretty dominant effort by your team yeah i think that's an important part of the game is you know cleaning up the defensive glass and you know of course i mean jake's been a great rebounder for us all year i mean he's a big strong kid that gets his body in there um but our other guy you know is spangler i mean Number number four um, is you know he's a really good athlete and I've seen a lot of games where you know he's getting yeah. seven eight offensive rebounds alone and sticking back. Well, Baylor did an excellent job of blocking him out, you know, doing things right and keeping him off the offensive glass and making it tough for him. You know, and then you know especially second half, you know they took a lot of perimeter shots and anytime you're going to you know shoot perimeter shots, you're going to have long rebounds. I really thought our guards, Chase Honkamp, Jackson Team, and McKay. I thought they all blocked out and then were able to do a good job of just going and getting it. Um, and so, like I said, I'm just very proud of all of our kids. And I could go, you know, specific study. I don't know, like Jackson T. I thought Jackson even played his best game of the year last night. I uh-huh. thought defensively, you know, we switched out on some screens and he's guarding Kessler and keeping him in front and, and challenging. And Kessler's really, really good. Uh-huh. So, 
Uh, I'm just very proud of the effort. Um, we knew defensive rebounding was going to be a key for us. That was an area that we struggled with last year just because we just didn't have a whole lot of size and bulk. So we've tried to emphasize that. And, and our kids did a really good job of, of blocking out, being in the right spots, and then going and getting it with two hands. The only the only chink I seen in your armor last night, Coach, was the free throw shooting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's there's no secret. I mean, we do struggle from the free throw line. I mean, we have some guys who, um, and they you know they put in a lot of work, um, but sometimes you know those are just the things is um, not able to knock them down. But you know, I just keep telling them, just keep plugging along, um, and hopefully, you know, I tell them, I mean, if you, if you just keep doing things right, keep working on it. Um, in a moment where we need them, uh, I think they're going to step up and knock them down. So, um, you know, we got guys working on it. I know the good thing is, is you know, McKay, he's shooting like 82% from the free throw line. So hopefully if nothing else, maybe we can get him the ball and let him go to the free throw line if we need to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, uh, free throws uh, in this time of year, you know, there was a lot of games last night that teams went home heartbroken. And uh, free throw shooting will probably come down to uh, some of these games further down the road. Yeah, it definitely does. You know, I mean, that's you can definitely finish off a team uh, from the free throw line if you can step in and knock them down at a high rate. Um, you know, I think, I think we know more than anybody how, how important free throws are. You know, last year we – probably win the regional by 12, 13 points, um, but we missed eight in a row, you know, in a game where we were up six or seven points, and so um, I think we know that. Um, we understand how important it is. Uh, it's one of those things, you know, like, yeah, yeah, of course, you know, the kids work on them, they shoot them on their own. Um, two things about that. One, as a coach, you can't spend an hour and a half just standing around watching your kids shoot free throws. And number two, um, you know, I, it's it's not like they're trying to miss them. You know, I mean, they're going up there, and you can't simulate. You know, like mm-hmm. last night, we're playing in front of 1,200 people with half of them screaming at your kid while he's trying to shoot a free throw with a lot on the line. Right. It's hard to simulate that in practice. Yeah. So, um, they're going to keep working on You know, they're going to mentally keep working on it, um, trying to perfect that. Um, but, you know, it's just one of those things. You know, the teams that come up short, I mean, you hate that it comes down to the free throws because, like I said, the kids obviously are trying to make them. Um, but we just talked about, you know, and I guess last time was a good example. Let's play so well to where even if we struggle from the line, maybe we can put the game out of reach and it won't come down to that. So All right. yep. that's kind of what we're going to push for. But you guys are right. I mean, there's going to be a game where we're going to have to step up and make some big ones. Well, I think that team defense, yeah, I think that team defense was definitely the, the difference in the game last night. Uh, the defense on Kessler especially, because Danny and I were talking before the game that we thought one of the keys to the game would be your ability to stop Kessler and his slashing and driving, and you were. You were able to stay in front of him. You drew a charge, I think, at least once on him, and uh, he just was yeah. not able to penetrate down the lane like he normally does against other opponents. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, we write some keys on the board before each game, and that was number one last night is can we keep 23 out of the paint? Um, and, you know, he's a really, really good mid-range player, which is you don't see that very often anymore. I mean, he shoots a true jump shot, and he elevates really well. And so, you know, we just talked about and we worked on, um, you know, when he gets in the paint, staying down, make sure he jumps first before you leave your feet, um, and, and just get a hand up, you know, challenge it. And we really felt like, if we made him take enough challenged mid-range shots with hands in his face, was he going to make some? Yeah. We just didn't know if he could make enough, you know, to beat us. So that was kind of our, our whole goal. And, and, you know, like I said, on-ball defense was excellent. Chase Hollenkamp did an amazing job on him. And when we were switching out, you know, McKay and, and Teeman and Hayden England, Hayden England came off the bench and gave great minutes guarding him and chasing him around. And that just frees up, you know, then that frees up our backside, you know. So, like, Darren Spangler, he can get in there and take – two charges like he did last night Mm -hmm. being in the right spots and so um you know if you're gonna play really solid team defense i mean it is a team defense it's more than just one guy on the ball it's about trusting your teammates and you know helping the helper that's kind of one of our number one sayings um you're gonna have a helper you're gonna have to help that guy and it just continues on down the line and um that i mean that's that's the most important thing that i think we we we've gotten so much better defensively as the year has gone on, and and that's that's been our emphasis. I mean, I, I think defense um, and rebounding plays, especially with the schedule that we have, and especially in the postseason. And so, if you can guard and rebound and not turn the ball over, 
I think you're going to give yourself a pretty good chance to win um, as long as you can get some buckets here and there. And I think we have enough weapons to do that. So. Well, your help defense uh, on Anthony Darge was huge last night, too. You know, at six foot seven, every time he would catch the ball in the block, yeah, he was guarded by Jake Martin, but here came another Woodlawn Cardinal over to help, and there was just nowhere for Darge to go because that help defense was there, and he was always double teamed and either missed the shot or turned it over or, or you know, something else. And it just yeah. uh, the defense was was stellar on him last night. Yeah, you know, and the same thing with him. I mean, you know, they got they got a lot of weapons, and with the big kid, you know, we just talked about swarming him and trying to maybe speed him up and not let him just you know go one on one and. More importantly, we we just we did not want to front and make sure that we did not give any lobs over the top where he could just catch it and, and lay it in. Right. Um, I've, I've seen several games where you know teams tried to front him. He is athletic. He's got really long arms, which is why he's such a good shot blocker. Um, and, and you just can't do that. I mean, the kid's going to make layups, and so we just tried to have Jake, you know, try to try to use his strength, you know, and, and get him off of the sweet spot and get him pushed out as far away from the basket as we could. And then, like you said, you know, at times where they would dump it in there, um, we wanted to have some guys active digging on the post and see if we couldn't get a steal, you know, or a turnover. If nothing else, just get the ball out of there, you know, and then we can close out and recover. Um, and then, like I said, then the most important thing is when the shot goes up, make sure and keep him off the glass. And Jake, I mean, Jake did an outstanding job on him, and he did a really good job. You know, the first time we played him, I don't, I have to double check. He had two points, but I think it was all free throw. I don't think he had a field goal, right? And I don't even know what he ended up with last night. He but had one. It's a credit to Jake, and it's a credit to the rest of our guys for helping. One field goal and two free throws. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what you held him to last night, and he didn't get that field goal until late in the game. Late in the game. Real late, late in the game. Real late. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I had a had a good interview with Coach Jerry Warren, a uh, longtime Thompsonville coach down there, Brian, at halftime, and I asked him yeah. uh, what he thought the key to the second half was, and he said yeah. the Thompsonville Tigers have to find a way to do some of the things that the Woodlawn Cardinals took away from them in the first half. He thought your team took yeah. a lot of things away from Thompsonville that they normally did. Yeah, that's, I mean, we, we tried to, you know, I mean, we obviously, we put in a lot of time to try to get our kids ready um, to guard, you know, their actions and their sets. Um, and that's the thing, I mean, we just try to make it difficult for them, um, trying to make sure that we're talking through, you know, switches on certain ball screens, you know, hedging when it's the big guy screening with the backside help. I mean, there's just, there's a lot of work that goes into that. Um, and, and like I said, I think the thing I was most, impressed with and proud of our guys is the ability to you know you got to be dialed in and focused it's not about the crowd or anything else it's about five guys on the floor talking communicating and i can't even tell you last night how many timeouts i didn't even have to say a word i mean our guys are telling each other you know hey listen remember in this action we're switching here we're talking we did not see that earlier in the year i mean we've had guys step up uh into leadership positions and when you got your players talking like that and figuring things out on the floor while you just that that's a big deal that makes a huge difference and so i really felt like we blocked out all the the crowd and the craziness um and we were able to stay in the moment and really really guard you know i, I felt like we stayed dialed in for four quarters um that's what it takes this time of year i mean there's no secret you know if we didn't mm-hmm. do that top would beat us there's a reason why they've won 30 games yeah so. Hey, we're just about out of time, but real quick, you got Gallatin County coming up as your opponent in the sectional. What do you know about them, and how's that preparation going? I'm sure you spent up uh, some late hours last night already, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, not a whole lot of sleep all last night between film and my four-month-old crying. So, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, they're a really good basketball team. You know, they've, they've, got, they've got several weapons that have played a lot of big games for them. Um, they do things right. They guard the right way. They run good stuff, so... We're going to have our work cut out for us. Um, but, you know, I told them, I mean, two things. One, you expect that you're going to need to play well to win a sectional game. Um, and number two, don't be satisfied. You know, like I said, last night was great. I enjoyed the moment. But when I got home, it was on to Gallatin County. And, you know, here in about ten minutes, it's on to Gallatin County. So mm-hmm. um, we're going to have to put in our work and, and really have, you know, three really good days of prep. Um, and I got, you know, our guy, both teams, they're going to play hard. You're going to play hard in a sectional game. But. Again, it's just about being focused and, and trying to take away their strengths. Um, and then hopefully, you know, we can come up with something to make sure we get some good looks at the mm-hmm. basket. 
and we'll see what we can do. It'll be, it'll be a fun game. Two teams to do things right, play the right way. Uh, that makes for a good basketball game. Sure does. Well, Brian, again, congratulations on the regional championship last night. Appreciate your time today on the Sports Couch. And uh, best of luck as you prepare for that game against Gallatin County next week in the sectional, okay? Yep, thank you very much. You guys have a good weekend. All right, you too. Take care. Bye-bye. Brian Gamber, head coach of the Woodlawn Cardinals. And, uh, yeah, I think that's nine regionals in the last 11 years. Yeah, it was eight out of ten heading in. All right, the right. So uh, that's pretty impressive. And, again, they are improved to 25-5 and five on the season. They'll take on Gallatin County at Gallatin County next week. And we will have the Gallatin County coach on the show with us here later on this morning as well. Coming up next, we're going to visit with Coach Shane Garner of the Cesar Valier Red Devils. Danny, can you uh, run through some yeah. of those scores again, uh, particularly in 1A, since we're talking 1A right now, and I'll get Coach Garner on. All right. From the 1A regional last night. Hey, let's see. I got ahead of myself here. Looking at some scores, Cesar Valera defeated Steelville last night, 62-59 in double overtime, and that had to be a heck of an atmosphere there. Gallatin County advances to their own sectional next week with a 64-52 victory over Hardin County. Woodlawn defeated Thompsonville, 58-40. And at Goreville, Cairo defeated Goreville, 74-71. So that sets up a cairo Cesar matchup on Wednesday night. Tuesday night, it'll be Woodlawn and Gallatin County, and the winners of those two games will meet Friday night down there in Gallatin County. Odin beat South Central 36-21, and at Oak, at Marissa, Oakville defeated Marissa Coulterville 52-51. There were some great games last night in regional championships, and so that's some of the 1A scores. You can check those scores out, and, of course, the 2A scores as well on our sports website at areasports.net. As Danny said, at Cesar Valier last night, what a wild one that was. Double overtime as the Red Devils defeat Steelville 62-59. to I bet that was standing room only as well. And joining us on the phone is head coach of Cesar Valier. That is Shane Garner. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Very good. I, 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 you must be exhausted after a game like that last night, though. Congratulations on the regional championship. But, yeah, that's got to be very, very tiring. Thank you. Yeah, it was uh, it was exhausting and uh, at every level, you know, <laughs> emotionally, physically, spiritually. It was uh, yep. it was draining, but um, you know, I, I just wish people could have saw how hard both those teams play. Yeah, uh, it was it was something to watch. With, I mean, both 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 sides were just extremely hard. You know, Coach, I saw a picture this morning. Uh, of you and one of your players sitting there after the game, having a little talk after the game last night, and uh, I'm sitting there capturing it, and you could just see that both of you were just mentally exhausted and physically drained sitting there in the chairs. It was like, wow, this is finally over. Yeah. Um, you know, there there are times when things happen, and they're happening so fast, and they're going on in front of you, and you don't really have an explanation for what happened or mm-hmm. what was- what, you know what you, what you just went through, and that was kind of our moment right there. And uh, you know, we were just sitting talking and thanking God for for the night and and, and what we were able to to do. And, and we were just we were just so thankful and uh, and blessed to, to come out of there with a win. And uh, you know, that there's something to said about an athlete who's given everything they've got and just coming down and pulling off and be able to have a smile on their face. I think that's what mm-hmm. the whole thing should be about. Well, this Steelville team, they seem to, to be peaking at the right time at the end of the season, and, uh, boy, it sounds like they gave you everything they had last night. Oh, I tell you what, um, they came out and, and were extremely physical with us, and uh, um, they were, I mean, they rerouted everything we tried to do. Um, and I tell you what, Owen Gross is a phenomenal player. Um, I know he was hurt, um, you know, through most part of the early winter this year, um, and they kind of lost some games there, but that young man is a, is a fine player and, can score when he wants to score and get a shot up whenever he wants to get a shot up. And, uh, I mean, he was tremendous. And he, I mean, he, he just kept extending the game, kept extending the game, kept extending the game. And, uh, and luckily we were able to get a front before he could get that last one up in the second overtime to send it to a third. Mm-hmm. Overtime. Well, I'm going to say you've got a special player uh, you know, on your own bench there, too, uh, Mr. Winchester, wearing that maroon. I mean, he, uh, he is a difference maker as well. And uh, players like that don't come along too often. Absolutely. Uh, Tyler's an extremely hard worker and, uh, you know, can, can make some shots when he needs some and, uh, and can get some and, and plays the entire game. I mean, the, the kid never comes out and exerts everything he has on both ends of the floor. 
Um, and, and, you know, he made some big free throws and some big shots there to, to get us back into the game and to tie it up in the, in the, you know, in the fourth quarter. And then, you know, some huge free throws into overtime to keep putting us in a position to win. So, um, very special young man, and uh, he's earned everything he's got. And, and he, he's drawing a lot of heat right now, um, you know, offensively from the teams that we're playing. You know, everybody's scouting extremely hard right now. And mm-hmm. so, you know, he's doing a great job of uh, keeping his composure doing that, and his teammates are doing a great job of trying to, to, to fill in the spots and get some points and shots whenever they need to to kind of help us stay balanced. You know, the thing I like about watching Tyler Winchester play is he just stays at an even keel, though. It looks like he doesn't get too high or too low emotionally. He's able to control his emotions and just uh, – just he's such a hard competitor, and he just doesn't seem to get up or down. He just kind of stays even keel. But I think that's a, a tribute to you as a coach and a mentor to him because uh, he kind of takes on your persona as well. Well, yeah. Well, thank you for that. Um, you know, it's a, a tremendous – uh, compliment, um, but you know that's, that's that's one thing that we do try to preach. We, we, you know, we call it. We don't want to ride the emotional roller coaster. You know, there's going to be highs and lows and ebbs and flows and all that that's going to come. But we just want to keep staying consistent in what we're going to try to do and, and not get too upset or, or too high when things are are rolling. And that's a uh, you know that's exactly what Tyler does. And you know, Tyler will hit a shot to start the game or hit a shot to win the game, and, and, and mentally he's taking it the same with the same approach. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why he's had so much success and is able to do the things that he's done because um, whether it's in practice or in a game, first shot, last shot, take it with the same mentality. Yeah, well, I've been to some of your games, and honestly, this is true, I've been to some of your games where – you know, you'll watch the game, and it, because he doesn't try to be flashy or cocky or arrogant or anything like that, he just even keel, and you don't realize it. And all of a sudden, he's got twenty-eight points, yeah. and, and it just he just does it so smoothly and effortlessly sometimes that you just don't realize what he's doing. It's uh, it's incredible. Yeah, and, and, and the other thing, he, he does a lot of small things that he did. Right, he's such an offensive rebounder. Um, you know, he gets a lot of stick back there. He's an excellent free throw shooter. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, there, there was one game where he had 36 points. And everybody's like, what? Well, he had 12 points from the field, 12 from the line. You know, it was right. 12, three. It was, you know, he, it was all just spread around and spread out nicely. And, um, but he is such a consistent and hardworking player that, um, yeah, yeah, by the end of the night you look at it and you're like, what? How did he in the world do that? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. He's, he's, he's picking it up and putting it in when he gets it. Well, Coach, your team now gets to advance to the Gallatin County Sectional. You'll play on Wednesday night against the Cairo Pilot Team. What do you know about this pilot bunch? Uh, well, we, we we did some work last night and tried to get some film, and we've got everything bundled up and ready to go. We're getting ready to meet here in about uh, 45 minutes and, and put in a couple hours of watching film and getting some stuff down. So, I mean, uh, you know, we're familiar with Cairo. Um, we used to play him in the Ducoin tip-off every year for five years, and then Obviously, last year we played them in the, in the sectional uh, semifinal, uh, too. So we're familiar with, with what they're going to bring and their style and a couple of their players. So uh, we'll dive a little bit deeper into them here in a second and, and get our plan ready to go and, uh, and move forward from there. Your team come out of the game pretty good shape last night health-wise? Health-wise, we're good. Uh, a little tired, but health, health-wise, uh, uh, um, we're good. Our, our, our boys were uh, – um, it was it was just one of those moments as a coach that you just you know you'll always remember those those smiles and that you know that just the the aura that we had in the locker room after the game it was just a a special night for them and I'm so glad that they were able to to make that type of memory that they'll uh, you know remember for the rest of their lives. Well, I'm sure that was a sellout crowd down at Cesar last night, wasn't it? Oh yeah, we, we, yeah, it was a packed house. Um, you know, our fans were very still still traveled very well. Um, it was it was it was a it was a great atmosphere for a one A 1A basketball game. Mm-hmm. Well, if you haven't had a conversation yet with Todd Tripp, I assume you probably will because that sounded like that was a wild one last night between Cairo and Goreville, with Cairo winning that one seventy four seventy one. But I'm sure uh, Coach Tripp can probably give you some insight there too on Cairo if he hasn't already. Yeah, yeah, we made contact last night, and, and you know, and obviously, you know, coming off a recent loss, you don't want to sure. know, bother too much. But we're 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 gonna get to talking here in a little bit and get situated so you know always appreciative of, of Todd and all our guys in the conference are you know are willing to help each other out and, you know everybody's rooting for everybody yeah other side of the bracket of course it's going to be Gallatin County against Woodlawn and uh, you know both of those teams as well and so it's going to be a very competitive sectional down there isn't it absolutely you know I, I think it's going to be um, 
you know, very competitive. Both nights will be packed, and, and uh, you know, that Friday night, whoever squeaks out, it's going to be a phenomenal game, too. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think everybody's looking at it coming in well, and everybody's playing well right now. So, yeah. Uh, should be a, should be another great week of basketball. Sure will be. Well, Coach, I know you got uh, other media commitments this morning, so we want to let you go, give you time to uh, get on those. But uh, we appreciate your time this morning with us here on the Sports Couch. And, again, congratulations on the regional championship last night with your victory over Steelville. And have a great weekend as you prepare for the next game, all right? All right. Thank you very much. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. That's head coach Shane Garner of the Cesar Valia Red Devils. Uh, boy, yeah, that had to be exhausting last night, <laughs> draining on a double overtime win, you know? Oh, man, can you imagine that? And then it was a one-point game. i got to see this picture you were talking about, by the way. Yeah. Was that him in Winchester, or who was no, it? No, I don't know who the young man was. Okay, well, they were just I sitting there drained he, after the he game. Kinda, huh? He was kind of turned, and oh, I couldn't man. see his number. Wow. And uh, Yeah, I can only imagine after that, because uh, we kept getting score updates while we were doing our game, and and that was a battle between Susser and Steelers. Yeah, they were just both laid back, yeah. and Shane Gardner had his arm around this yeah. young man, and it was like... Wow, what did we just go through yeah, here? Yeah, no doubt. Well, and again, I think the same thing was true at Goreville last night. That 74-71 with Cairo beating Goreville. That game was back and forth. Too. Yeah, you know, uh, Cairo kind of jumped out there, and they was ahead 10 or 12 points, and uh, Goreville fought and got back in mm-hmm. that game and uh, just well, couldn't quite finish. Well, that's a lot of points scored between them. That's 145 points scored between them, so that was an up-and-down game last yeah. night. No doubt about it. All right. Hey, when we come back, we're going to visit with head coach Doug Creel of the Mount Vernon Rams. They won their regular season finale last night in 3A basketball. They went on the road and won at Cahokia, and with that win, the Rams share the conference championship in the South 7 Conference, and it's the first uh, uh, championship of the conference uh, in 20 years, believe it or not. Even though Mount Vernon's had such a good basketball program for the last 20 years and had a lot of 20-win seasons, uh, first time that they have won the conference or shared it in 20 years. That's just how tough the South 7 Conference is year in and year out. But we will visit with head coach Doug Creel coming up next here on the Sports Couch. Programming on 90.9 The Vine is underwritten by ProVision Eye Care. Located in Mount Vernon, ProVision Eye Care has a 90-year history of serving Jefferson and surrounding counties. They provide quality comprehensive eye exams along with diagnosing and treating eye disease. ProVision Eye Care is located at 112 South 42nd Street and their phone number is 244-0508. Dr. Jennifer Bass would like to share a passage from Proverbs 29:18, Where there is no vision, the people perish. Sometimes you need an attorney who can look out for your interest. Located just a short drive away in Mount Vernon, Olson and Reeves offer a free consultation to discuss your needs. Everything is discreet and confidential. At Olson and Reeves, they can provide you with consultation and assistance with traffic law and DUIs, estate planning, living wills, divorce, real estate contracts, personal injury and accidents, as well as medical malpractice. Call Olson and Reeves Attorneys at Law in Mount Vernon at 316-7322. The Pain Center of Fairfield Memorial Hospital strives to deliver the most advanced, minimally invasive services to restore function, relieve pain, and renew the hope of our patients. We serve individuals with chronic pain caused by a wide variety of medical issues. And the chances are, we've treated someone with pain just like yours. Don't wait. Start living without pain today. If you are experiencing chronic pain, talk to your doctor about visiting us at the Pain Center of Fairfield Memorial Hospital. Take your health into your own hands and stop the pain. For more information, call 842-2082 or visit fairfieldmemorial.org slash Pain. Hey, welcome back to the Sports Couch. You're live on a Saturday morning on 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine Radio and streaming live worldwide on both of our websites. We have live video streaming right now at areasports.net and live audio streaming at wvyn.org. I'm Randy Olson, live in studio along with Danny Anselman. And we've talked a lot about uh, 1A and 2A regionals, and we'll have a couple more coaches on that uh, one regionals last night we're going to talk to. But uh, we're going to talk a little regular season action last night because a big game over at Cahokia last night saw the Mount Vernon Rams go in and beat the Comanches 68-52 to after just beating them two nights ago on Wednesday night uh, at senior night at Mount Vernon. And by beating Cahokia those last two games, that gave the Rams a share of the conference championship last night in the South 7 Conference, something that they hadn't done in 20 years. And that's uh, amazing when you think of the good teams that the Rams have had over the past 20 years with some 20-win seasons. But the league is tough. It's really tough to win the conference. And as we discussed earlier, Danny, you know, last year you look at Marion. They got fourth in the league, but yet they're the ones that ended up in the Elite Eight last night or, or last year in the uh, Super Sectional. So it's a tough, tough league. Uh, you know, uh, people – 
people that haven't witnessed that 3A basketball need to just go watch some of it, and I guarantee you they'll leave with a different perspective. I did. I'll never forget the first time I went to Mount Vernon mm-hmm. to do a game with you, and Mount Vernon played Belleville Altoff, and I thought, these kids can't be 17, 16, 17, 18 years old. This mm-hmm. looks like junior college kids playing. Pretty physical. Yeah, pretty physical. Joining us right now is head coach of the Rams, Doug Creel. Good morning, Doug. How are you? Good morning, guys. Hey, good to have you on the show, and congratulations on the win last night, and uh, congratulations on sharing that conference championship with Belleville Altoff. Man, what a what a finish! You, you beat Belleville Altoff coming from behind in uh, overtime last week, and then you you beat Cahokia twice in uh, in three days. Uh, woo, that's a uh, that's a tall order, but you pulled it off. So congratulations. Yeah, I appreciate it. How, how about that? Uh, you know, we thought we were out of there for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we didn't think we had a chance, but Cahokia beat Altoff at Cahokia. And, and, uh, you know, we talked about it before that Altoff game. We still have a chance to win the conference or share the conference. We got to win tonight. And, uh, you know, that was a great game for us. It's a game that uh, maybe we shouldn't have won, but uh, everybody that played contributed. I thought there was great atmosphere, great crowd, chaos. Well, it was great, and, and uh, the kids played well. We won in overtime. And we just kind of carried that over uh, Wednesday night against Cahokia. We, you know, we didn't get off to a good start. We turned it over. But Cahokia kind of plays uh, unconventional defensively, and once we adapted a little bit, we did well. And, and uh, last night, you know, our kids were determined uh, to win to, to win and, and share that conference because uh Early in, before the season started, I took a picture of our uh, banner plaques that we've got up there in our gym and said it's been 20 years since we've uh, won the conference or shared the conference. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's going back to Scott Gamber and Kent Williams and Chris Morgan and John Naki and James mm-hmm. Wilson and right. uh, Kyle McClure, that, that crew. And uh, Like you said, it's hard to believe. But when you think about it, you know, there was a few years, Cahokia uh, got second one year, mm-hmm. and then a year or two later, Centralia got second. Yeah, we're talking about in the state, Carter not in the there. conference. Yeah, we're talking about finishing in the yeah, state, I'm right? Talking, yeah, I'm talking about in the state. Yep. I'm sorry, I did. Right, yep. Uh, and Carbondale at one time got uh, second in the state. Right. Uh, of course, Altoff went up there and got second, and then the next year won it. Right. So we have been pretty good basketball team and uh but there's always been like either Centralia, Carbondale, one of the Isle Talk, Cahokia, one of those schools has just been better. And our league has been uh, uh probably down a little bit this year, but uh, man man it's been a it's a great basketball conference and it's it's tough to win. Yeah. Because like you said, we've had some really, really good teams the last twenty years and uh it just feels good to share it. it feels good to, uh, to be there at the top, and, and uh, you know we'll take it. It's something we talked about was a goal, and, and uh, our kids achieved it. They felt really proud, proud of that last night. Well, you look at that 05 team. I mean, that went to the super sectional. You made the elite eight that year, and went up to Springfield and played Champaign Central. But that team in 05 did not win the conference either. So uh, that was part of that 20 year stretch. Well, so. We were a lot like talked about we were a lot like Marion mm-hmm. I think we finished third that year and right. uh, third in the conference and we ended up going and like you said last year Marion ends up fourth they ended up going, having a big run going to super section mm-hmm. so well, it's a typical <clears throat> South Seven school finishing in the middle of the pack and it's going to happen <laughs> Well, you got to be uh, pretty happy with your uh, junior varsity team. They finished out an undefeated season last night over there at Cahokia, too. So, you know, you got to feel you got some kids that's coming up going to be able to step up to that varsity level and help you. Well, they, you know, they already have. You know, like last night, uh, Simon Wilson picks up a couple quick fouls, and uh, uh, Quanty comes in. He ends up getting 30 points. I mean, Quanty is uh, wow. very athletic. Uh, wow! That long and, and, and uh, he, he scored around the basket. Of course, the way they play uh, was perfect for Quanti, but still, uh, he made some outstanding plays and he rebounds and scores. And, 
uh, you know, also down the stretch, uh, Carson Pro took care of the basketball, got to the rim a few times, scored, and also made uh, clutch free throws for us because uh, Jackson was out, didn't play the second half. So, uh, you know, those guys are already stepping up. Hunter Simmons is, uh, was in there, uh, Evan League, Dylan Harkins. Those guys are all good players. They just need more varsity time. And the tough thing is, you know, there's, there's nights where I'd like to get more, like I don't get Evan in enough, or I don't get Hunter in enough, or I don't get Dylan in enough. So it's it's kind of tough. It's nice. It's been nice this year having great competition in practice. That's what makes your team good when you're when your other guys can push the older guys and and uh, uh, and they're good teammates. That's that's an even bigger thing. They're very very good teammates, and, uh, good kids. Very proud of. Them. Well, coach, you're gonna. Head up there to that Salem Regional now, and that thing looks pretty wide open up there. It looks to me like anybody that can put a couple good games together could leave their regional champs. Well, we we think so, and and uh, uh, we feel like we're playing very very well. And uh, you know, we played triad earlier, but I expect a better triad team is going to play a little harder. Uh, we've changed a little bit, you know. I mean, now, now it still will be. And Jackson will be questionable you know, Monday because of concussion. So uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. But you know, I expect our kids to play well. Uh, I'd like to get back to that uh, win Monday to get to the Wednesday game where we have to go play uh, Salem at Salem. You know, they've beaten us twice. They've proven they're better. Like another crack at it, just like an opportunity maybe to get to that Friday night. But mm-hmm. right, it's wide open. And this is another goal that we talked about. We talked about winning the conference, and we talked about getting that regional and giving us an opportunity to get to the first. So that's bad things can happen. You know, our season get in Monday night, but I feel like we're playing well. Our kids are still excited. I said this before that a lot of times this year, some teams are ready to kind of keep playing and move move on and some teams are ready just for it to be over i don't i feel like we're a team that's uh, is excited about playing and and wants to progress uh you know triad or salem or somebody else may have something to say about that but i feel like our kids don't want our season to be over and that's not something that says a lot about our our, our team and our kids you said that uh, jackson didn't play the second half last night what happened to him uh he took a blow to the head uh, and we don't really know where it was sometime in the first half it was kind of out of it we had Terry look at him and uh, we tried to put him in we started in the third quarter but he just was not right uh, I think butting in with uh, another coach he had met that number five and he went out also and didn't come back in so. hmm. but uh, you know hey, that's that's part of basketball, people getting hurt, people being sick. Uh, you know, I've always said you don't make excuses. It's just next man up. And mm-hmm. Our kids played very well. Coop played well and, and Weston and, and our young guys. And uh, Simon didn't give as many opportunities because he seemed to be in foul trouble. But, you know, Hunter stepped up. And, uh, our young guys have stepped up all year. So, uh, we're going to see what happens, and, and uh, like I said, it's next man up. And see mm-hmm. So I guess uh, Weston Brockhouse was okay last night with his ankle. He played the whole game? Well, he wasn't 100%, but he, uh, you know, he played on it. He definitely went on sit out mm-hmm. with an opportunity. Our, our kids are really, this is really important to them to, to be conference champions and, and – uh, you know, they've talked about it, and uh, I think it was important to them. I heard Lucas Cooper talk about, hey, we're going to get 2019 up there. Right. And, uh, and something we can always talk about and look mm-hmm. at. And I thought they've really bought into this. Mm-hmm. Uh, something they can be proud of when they when they come back to the gym or right. watch games. 
here. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, you had the, the doctor visit this week with a mere span. Uh, I think an MRI done. So what was the prognosis? What no, was what did they say about him? Well, no, he will know uh, Tuesday, and uh, but you know he hasn't practiced and, and uh, run or mm-hmm. tested that knee at all. It's going to take a little while, regardless of uh, whatever it shows. Regardless, it's going to. It's going to take him uh, a little while to get back. And, right. And, uh, you know, I put him in there for a couple minutes against Centre, which was a mistake. Um, uh, you know, cause, but we thought he was ready. You know, we thought he, uh, he, ended up, he ended up going down again. But uh, I'm going to be a little, and I know uh, Terry, mm-hmm. and our, uh, we'll, we'll be a little more cautious with him. We're going to make sure he's healthy and strong on him. And, and ready to roll. Hopefully, there's not anything uh, torn in there. But you know, you never know. That's why they got the MRI, and we'll we'll just deal with that and move on. Yeah. All right. Well, Doug, we appreciate your time this morning. Again, congratulations on the win last night at Cahokia and sharing the South Seven Conference. Uh, that's that's been a goal, and that's something that uh, everybody can be proud of. And best of luck next week as you prepare for Triad. Again, that game is Monday night, and you play the second game Monday night at Salem. I believe that's a 7.30 start for Ram fans, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, because uh, it's uh, Benton and Centralia in the first game at 6, I believe, right? Yeah. 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 It, you know what? It's hard to believe it. It's 1A, 2A regional time. Oh, I know. We're getting right to start. They're going to need to, uh, that some teams are already moving on to Right. Season's gone by fast. It has. Guys, thanks for coming. Thanks mm-hmm. for bouncing for us and take care of us this year. All right. Hey, no problem, Doug. Again, good luck on Monday. All right. All right. We'll see you now. All right. Bye bye. That's head coach Doug Creel of the Mount Vernon Rams. Yeah. They, uh, Guys are excited about having that 2019 put on that uh, regional banner, and rightfully so. It's not something you can take for granted in the South Seven Conference. Well, you know, when it's. Uh, when it's been uh, 20 years, mm-hmm. uh, that says a lot. Because, like you said, mm-hmm. there's been a lot of great teams. There has uh, been get through there, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it's uh, just hard to imagine. It's been 20 years. Yeah, it it, it is. I, I can think of um, well, the 2001 team. Uh, they made it to the sectional championship. Um, I remember they beat Belleville West on a last second shot by Steve Strickland, um, Jr., and that was at Centralia, I believe. And I, I know that team won at least 20 games and, you know, went pretty far, went to the Sweet 16 or whatever, and yet they didn't win the conference. Either. Oh, yeah. So, it's, you know. It's a tough place to play. Yeah. All right. Hey, when we come back, the Wayno is going to join us. Wayne Hari, head coach of the Nashville Hornets, will be our guest next on the Sports Couch, so stay tuned. You've heard the old saying, practice makes perfect. Well, there's actually a lot of truth to that, and you can get one-on-one instruction in baseball, softball, basketball, as well as speed and agility drills at the Sports Zone in Fairfield. The Sports Zone has been in business for quite some time now and has helped many area boy and girl athletes excel in their sport of choice. Lessons and practice times are available at convenient times that meet your schedule. The Sports Zone is located on Delaware Street in Fairfield, and we appreciate their support. Real Life Radio thanks Fairfield Printing and Graphics for their partnership in local Christian radio ministry. Fairfield Printing and Graphics offers custom sizes for banners and signs, as well as yard signs, corrugated signs, and metal signs. Fairfield Printing and Graphics also specializes in custom t-shirts, business cards, wedding invitations, hats, bags, and much more. They are located at number 5 Williamson Drive in Fairfield, and their phone number is 842-4048. Are you going out of town for a vacation or a weekend getaway? What are you going to do with your dog? That's easy. There's Jagger's Doggy Daycare in Mount Vernon. Jagger's Doggy Daycare is your one-stop shop for overnight dog boarding, doggy daycare, as well as dog grooming, and obedience dog training. It's your dog's home away from home. and They will thrive, and they'll get one-on-one attention by a great staff. More information is available on the web at jaggersdoggydaycare.com. Jagger's Doggy Daycare. 414 Main Street in Mount Vernon. Welcome back to the Sports Couch. You're live on a Saturday morning on 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine Radio. And also streaming live worldwide on both of our websites. We have live video streaming right now at areasports.net and live audio streaming on the Vine website at wvyn.org. I'm Randy Olson, live in studio along with Danny Anselman. 
And last night, the Nashville Hornets won another regional championship. They've punched their ticket to the 2A sectional as they took care of business last night against Trenton Westland, winning the regional at Carlisle by a score of 45-30. to And joining us on the phone right now is the Wayno head coach of the Nashville Hornets, Wayne Hari. Good morning, Coach. How are you? How you doing, guys? Good to talking to you. Well, good to talk to you, too. Congratulations on another regional championship, and uh, looked like you took care of business, and I'm going to guess that defense was a big part of it. We kept getting score updates last night, and, yep, it looks like the Hornets' defense was doing their thing again. Yeah, I thought we guarded pretty well. You know, we uh, you know, we uh, got up and pressured them a little bit, and, and I thought we stayed between them and the basket and, and made it uh, pretty hard to score. Of course, uh, <clears throat> they've got... Uh, Coach Brady's boy, uh, uh, player. You know, I think he's, I think he's an all-state player, uh, six, seven kid. You know, can do a lot of different things out there. And we had an issue with him. He's, you know, we had uh, our Bryce Bowman got a little foul trouble, so we had to put Carson Parker on him. But he still was scoring from all over the fo- all over the floor. And, and I thought we were doing a good job on. Him. Sometimes you got to give credit, kids credit there. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, but I thought I thought we did a good job on the rest of the, on the rest of the kids. Yeah, did they try to control the tempo on you last night? Was that uh, their style of play last night against you? A little bit. I mean, I, they did a little bit in early, and then um, uh, then they then they played a little bit. They were just you know trying to find a good shot, you know, and they were moving around a little bit, you know, and they would attack it. But that's that's fine, and uh, we had to guard it. And uh, I thought we did a better, I thought we did a real good job at it. Uh, uh, um, we got some we got some steals and. Uh, uh, Knocked the ball away a couple mm-hmm. times, a few times for him, and uh, and our you know our just overall defense was was pretty solid. Well, you said Boltman got in uh, foul trouble last night, and situation like that when you face adversity, it's next man up, and it sounds like uh, you're able to do that. Yeah, I, you know we had we had good minutes off our bench last night and, uh, with uh, Terry Polchinski and Matt Anderson, and uh, they, they gave us a little bit of lift there when we, when, uh, when he we had fact we had to take him out. Uh, you know, he had to sit on the bench for a little bit for us. And, Price did, and uh, they stepped up to the plate a little bit and, and, and did a good job. That's always important because you just never know what happens. And, uh, um, and uh, I thought, uh, you know, they got a couple steals, a few rebounds, and uh, Matt Anderson scored a you know a couple big buckets for us. So uh, everything helps. Yeah. Well, you move on to the sectional now, and I believe you got a date against uh, West Frankfurt as they beat uh, Chester last night, fifty-four to thirty-eight. And uh, then on the other side of the bracket, it's Pinckneyville and Alton Marquette. Redbirds, were you surprised that they won that game last night over Chester? Well, I, I thought it'd be close. I, I you know, they uh, they're just so athletic. You know, they're very athletic, and uh, of course, they got the Johnson kid, which is a very good player. But you know, the rest of them are so athletic; they can do a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, you know they can get up and pressure you, and and, uh, and uh, you know they, you know the people they play, they're they're used to that. Um, but any time, I will say this: any time you go into Chester, and uh, uh, you know they're, Chester has just a tremendous team, one of the better teams that they've ever, they've ever had. Uh, when it, it double digits down there, which is 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 very good. I mean, we went mm-hmm. down there and just and survived. We won by eight or something like that. So. I know how tough a place it's play, and I'm sure it was packed with Chester fans, and I'm sure West Franklin brought quite a few fans too. But it's a tough place to play, and that's a credit to them. So that tells you how good they're playing right now. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I think West Frankfurt is peaking at the right time, and and again, uh, new coach and everything, putting in a new system. But it seems like that they are really gelling at the right time when you want to be at postseason. Well, it seems like it to me. I, you know, they've come a long way, and uh, again, you made a good point. Uh, you know, uh, new. New guy taking it over and uh, putting his system in, and it just takes you know you can do what you want in the summertime, but until you start playing basketball games against uh, other people, you don't really know what you got. Mm-hmm. And, uh, during, like during the season, so it takes some time, and uh, the kids got to get used to you. And uh, uh, it's just like I did last year, you know, taking over for Coach Weathers, Brad. Uh, uh-huh. You know, just tremendous. Just uh, you know, uh, you know, I think you know, Hall of Fame coach does an unbelievable job knows everything about the game it just it's just different feel for the kids and it takes a little bit of time you know uh you know we we sure kept a lot of stuff that he did you know we, we want to do that because you don't want to change something that 
works been working and uh and the guy that knows how to coach but it's just, it's just a different feel sometimes you know when a different guy takes over right well i was at your game against pinkneyville here a couple of weeks ago on senior night and, and i saw you and uh, coach weather standing and talking uh, before the game and uh uh, I'm not sure what that conversation was about, but uh, I'm sure it was entertaining. But that's a lot of uh, coaching experience of two guys standing there together talking shop. Well, I'm I'm always picking his brain. I mean, uh, he's seen a lot more games than I have, and he's he's had a lot of success. And I'm always uh, uh, talking to him about things. In fact, I I uh, talked to him this morning again. So uh, mm-hmm. you know, I I just when yeah when you got those guys around the around you know in the area or going to your game and he <coughs> loves the basketball uh hey i'm asking him i'm asking people all the, I'm, I'm asking whoever you are i'm going to ask some questions and, mm-hmm. and, uh, and i want to know what they're thinking about well you know coach uh, that's just g- good coaching on your part you got to use your resources that you have available to you and if you don't take advantage of those you're sure missing out yeah i mean that's there's no question i you know uh you know you can't get by with experience and you know sometimes it's you know, when you're sitting in the stands or just watching the team play, and you're not coaching. You see a lot, lot clearer stuff than when you're trying to coach and you're trying to do different things and making sure your kids play hard and, or something like that, or you know, or your game plan. But you know, when they're just sitting watching, you know, these other coaches, you know, they can see a lot of different things. So you're always asking questions, and that's what I want to do. Or you know, or anything else that might work down the road, or what they've seen. You know, he. He goes to different basketball games throughout the area, uh, uh, so you always want that available to you. And uh, it's like uh, you know, I talk to Darren Lee, Coach Lee at Collinsville. We talk every week, so uh, you just, you just, it just makes you, it makes you feel like uh, you're trying to see what what will work and what can't. And mm-hmm. uh, it's just you sure you sure want to keep that available for you. Boy, speaking of, uh, just say, Danny, speaking of uh, Coach Darren Lee, man, what a big win he got, uh, his Collinsville team beating East St. Louis. That's uh, huge. He's having a special year over there, isn't he? He sure is. I, you know, it's, he, you know he's, he's been battling that Southwest Conference. Mm-hmm. We all know how tough that is with all these athletes right. in there. And, uh, we talk about that all the time. And in fact, I went and watched him play uh, West on that Thursday because they moved the game from Friday to Thursday mm-hmm. because of the weather last right. week. And, uh, you know, just the, the athletes out there that that they have to battle night in and night out. He's really got them playing well. You know, he's 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 got them. You know, doing things. You know, the way he wants them to do. And and uh, uh, you know, some of the things he tells me and who the, how they got to battle uh, the players that they have to do play against is just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's got the Kayhawks uh, where they want. Uh, you know, I think he'll be a tough out. And. Uh, um, but it's a it's a huge win. He said, you know, anytime you beat East St. Louis, it's just you know how, how you know how many athletes they've got. Oh, yeah. uh, it's a, it, was a, it was a great win for him. Well, coach, I was just going to tell you, uh, you've probably got all the footage and stuff you need. But that West Frankfort team played some pretty good basketball down there at that El Dorado Holiday Tournament, and they're on foxesfans.net where we covered that. Uh, there's some options there where you look at if you're looking for some more footage or anything on them. <laughs> I'm sure there is. I believe that. Uh, I believe that. But uh, yeah, we're 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 watching a lot of stuff here, and uh, um, yeah, and, and and you know, again, you watch them, you know, watching them on tape, on tape and different things like that. Again, they've got players in all all the spots, so uh, um, uh, they're all capable. So it makes them such such a dangerous team. There's no question about that. Well, hey, I got to ask you something non-basketball related here. Uh, your your daughter Jordy was recently uh, locked out of her apartment in her car. Did uh, did Wayno come to the rescue? Did Dad uh, come to the rescue on that one? <laughs> I, I, she didn't call me. I'll be honest with you. I don't think she wanted to call me that. <laughs> She's probably too Wayno embarrassed. Wanted, uh, yeah, because I don't think Wayne will want to drive from Nashville to Edwardsville. Uh, probably not. In. You know what I'm saying? You know, those college kids, they get in a little bit late. Yeah, you know I'd probably. So. Yeah, you were probably in bed, and she probably didn't want to call you anyway. She's probably too embarrassed by well, that one. But. Well, you know, i tell you another good one about that. My daughter was in high school, and she calls me, and she said, uh, Dad, she said, uh, I've locked my keys in the trunk of my car. I said, well, sounds to me like you've got a problem. She said, uh, well, what are we going to do about it? I said, I don't know what you're going to do about it, but I said, you better call Alan Tefteller at Tefteller Motors and hope he can make you a key. Yeah, right. We were right in the middle of planting season, and she was wanting me to come and unlock her car. 
Yeah, I understand that. You that ain't happening. You know, no, no, no. Your, on your side. That's, uh, no, you you go do that. That's your deal, man. You, you uh, you you made that problem. You go fix it. Right. Right? We're not getting off the tractor. That we're not getting off the tractor. That is not happening. <laughs> Well, I did see that you had uh, pictures uh, both with, with both your daughters last night after the game, and I know they're proud of uh, what you've done there at Nashville and proud of the regional championship last night. And, you know, it's just uh, having your family around you like that and support you, and, of course, you've coached them and stuff, um, that is so important. It's a blessing, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. I, you know, it's, uh, they really support me. They've been supporting me throughout my coaching career. and. uh they're really, they're really special to me, and you know, with my with my wife Cheryl too. It's just, uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, mm-hmm. They're always in my corner. You know, you got ups and downs when you coach, when you coach. You know, and you got to have that support at home. And uh, uh, I, I'm really grateful for that. I, you know, wins or losses or all this, how this season's going to go, we don't know. But I know when I go home, uh, they support me and they love me. And uh, you know, it, it makes you feel good. I, you know, you, you know, you, you know, you get out and about, you just don't know what's going to be said or what's not but you know when you, you need your family support and uh if you don't have that it's pretty i think all our co- all the coaches know it, it, it's it's tough to coach mm-hmm. that but uh i really appreciate what they do for me and uh uh, they're pretty special. The whole family's special. Yeah, and it is so difficult on the wives because, particularly this type of year, time of year. I mean, you are spending so much time looking at game film and scouting, and on the phone talking to other coaches to get scouting reports. I mean, but you have to have that prep time, and and fortunately, these wives understand that. And and without their support and their understanding, it would just be so hard to do your job. You can't, Harley. Yeah, I, you know, I'm I'm fortunate that she played some sports, you know, in college, in high school, and college. So that's she kind of understands it so that that really helps and, you know and she likes to go you know if, if you're a wife you better like to go watch it you know if, yeah. you, know, if you don't like it then, then i mean you better go like you like better watch like basketball baseball whatever their husbands are coaching so that helps and you know and it does you know it, it makes it makes it up in the summertime you know she drives a combine for me and the tractor so we can so it kind of it, it works both ways so it helps it helps that way too mm-hmm. yeah absolutely well, Wayno, we'll let you go. We appreciate your time this morning. Again, congratulations on the regional championship victory, and best of luck as you prepare for West Frankfurt next week at the sectional, okay? Hey, it's great talking to you guys. I really appreciate it. All right. Have All a good right, weekend. Wayne. Good luck. Okay, bye-bye. See ya. That is head coach Wayne Hurry of the Nashville Hornets. They keep that train rolling, and, um, you know, I didn't want to say anything about being ranked first in the state because I don't want to, you know, go there and jinx them or anything, but, um, man, it's going to take – a monumental effort by somebody to eliminate Nashville. They are just they clicking on all cylinders. Well, you know they really are. Uh, he's just got a great group of athletes over there, and uh, they've got that winning tradition. And uh, it'll take a pretty good effort. But you know what? Stranger things have happened. Yeah, things can happen. I mean, uh, you know, you just have one bad game this time of year, and and your season can come to an end. So, yep, anything can happen. Uh, you touched upon the 1A regional scores again. Can you go through the 2A regional scores again there? Yeah. Go ahead. From Harrisburg, Fairfield moves to 31-2 and two on the season with a 70-56 victory last night. Uh, probably one of the surprise up at Shelbyville, nobody was expecting this matchup. Uh but Payne beat Marshall 72-71 in a game that was a heck of a ball game up there at Mount Carmel. The Mount Carmel Aces uh, keep things rolling along here. Uh, they've won like 13 in a row since they've got healthy, and their uh, 53-36 victory over Red Hill last night sends them to Vandalia to match up with T-Town, who defeated St. Anthony 58-33. That'll be on Wednesday night from Vandalia. Uh, Pinckneyville advances over AJ 55-39. Alt Marquette beat Greenville 44-40. Nashville over Westland 45-30. And West Frankfort and Chester will, was 54-38. So that'll be Nashville and West Frankfort and Marquette against Pinckneyville. Well, I'm telling you what, that Alton marquette Pinckneyville game ought to be a doozy. Oh, yeah. You know, it really will be. In 1A, of course, it's going to be uh, the Gallatin County Hawks. Uh, at home, hosting a sectional, they will take on the Woodlawn Cardinals after Gallatin County beat Hardin County last night on the road at Hardin County. They win the regional championship over Hardin County 64-52. to And the uh, new head coach of the Gallatin County Hawks, Jeff Herman, joins us right now. Good morning, Jeff. How are you? 
Uh, good morning, guys. Doing very well. A little tired, but doing real well. I bet you're real tired. And uh, welcome to your debut on the Sports Couch. We're uh, happy to have you. And a uh, big regional championship win last night for your Hawks. And I'm sure it wasn't easy, particularly when you got to go beat an opponent on their floor. I'm sure it wasn't easy to get there. But, right, yeah, from what I understand, yeah, with the flooding. Yeah, we had a we had to go an alternate route that took an extra thirty minutes to get us there because of flood water. But, uh, I experienced yeah, I experienced okay. that last year this time, Coach. I I covered some games down there at that Hardin County sectional down there last year, and I thought I was never going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's worth the drive because I'm telling you, Sharon Austin did an awesome job with the food. Hospitality room was great. And they put on a fantastic uh, event for the regionals. Allen County hosted real well. And what a great place to play. But the best thing about it is I know another great place to play, and that's Gallatin County. And that's where your Hawks are headed next week to take on this Woodlawn Cardinal team. Uh, you have to be excited about the opportunity to get to go home and play in a sectional. Yeah, we kept talking on senior night that uh, you know if we can deliver at Hardin County, boys, then we come back home and have a couple more senior nights if we can keep delivering. Well, walk us through the game last night and, and how you went about beating Hardin County last night. <clears throat> uh, we just try to focus on, you know, uh, man defense for his keeping spaced out. Um, we did pretty good until we got in some foul trouble. That kind of hurt us midway through the game. But it was just a, a team effort, um, you know, trying to be in the help side and trying to just control the tempo. That was the biggest thing. Well, when you talk about your Gallatin County Hawks team, you've got a team that's got quite a bit of experience there. Uh, you got some nice players in Audie Goble, the Hish boy, Robbie Prince. Uh, you've got a nice team, Coach. you got to be pretty excited about your chances next week. Yeah, I am. Like, like you said, we're you know pretty much a senior-led team. Um, I've got you know Audie Goble and Robbie Prince have been playing since they've been freshmen at the varsity level. And then I've got uh, Air Rushing and Lucas Reeder that have played, you know, solid minutes for the last couple of years at the varsity level. And a junior, Dawson, Dawson Hish, that has been playing since he's been a freshman. So we have some experience, and, um, you know, we're just looking forward to trying to have a good game because, uh, you know, Woodlawn, they played real well, well-respected, and deserve all the respect because they play really good team defense. Yeah, you know, uh, we had to call their game last night, and uh, they come out and they hit Thompsonville right off the bat. It was 12 nothing before Thompsonville, I think, realized what was going on, and then it was an uphill battle the rest of the evening for them. Yeah, they, they uh, space the floor real well, and, you know, they <laughs> rotate, cover back, and they just talk. You know, they communicate so well on defense. Um, you know, they, they take you out of your game if you're not careful. Well, this isn't the first go around between your Hawks and the Cardinals either. I mean, a few years ago, you know, you've met uh, in in sectional games. So uh, this is not the the first rodeo between uh, Gallatin County and Woodlawn. Yeah, we uh, told the boys that last night in the locker room that Woodlawn won, and we talked about how you know this is a chance, maybe for, hopefully for some redemption uh, after two years ago. Um, that was a great environment to walk into, and it was a great game. And we're hoping we can have the same type of virus, same type of game, and. Hopefully, a uh, different outcome, though. Yeah, I was just wondering, are uh, you going to allow Woodlawn any fans in the game, or are the Hawks going to take all the seats? Well, I, I'm, I'm expecting it's probably going to be a standing room only type of environment because uh, <laughs> when, when it was at North City, it was that type of environment. Yeah, it was. Well, they uh, they experienced that at Wayne City last night. Your team played up there in the Conrad Allen Holiday Tournament, and that place was full, and they were standing in every corner of the gym. One of the school board members asked me this morning, he said, hey, was there a big crowd up there last night? And I said, yeah. He said, so you're telling me if the fire marshal had come in, he probably wouldn't have been very happy. I said, no, probably not. Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> definitely capacity. Biggest crowd I'd ever seen at Wayne City before, for sure, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you're uh, probably going to be spending the weekend uh, looking at game film and talking to other coaches, getting scouting reports and things like that as you prepare for this uh, game against Woodlawn, right? Yeah. In fact, uh, my, one of my senior leaders got on to me last night as we're taking the uh, bus route through town. He goes, Coach, get off the phone and let's enjoy this. I said, buddy, I'm getting game film already. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and that is uh, that is kind of one of the bummer things about it, Coach. Uh, these moments are so 
rare and hard to come by that a guy has to not lose focus and enjoy some of that time too especially you as a new first year head coach you know uh, you can't take this for granted make sure you enjoy the moment but you like you said you got to prepare for the next phase of it yeah i don't want to i don't want to disappoint my, my boys by any chance and i want to give them every opportunity i can so you know i'm sitting through and just uh just like every coach this time of the season just analyzing every little bit that I can see that might give us a slight edge. Um, you know that that's that's what my job is right now. Well, on the other side of the bracket in that sectional, uh, you're going to have uh, Seth Valier against Cairo. Uh, those were two close games last night. Uh, did those scores surprise you at all? The, the scores and the outcomes of those two games. Well, this time of the year, I mean, anything can happen, and uh, those are some fantastic teams. And you know, uh, Goreville is a really fantastic team to beat us earlier in the season so you know <clears throat> I, it's it's that time of year it's all exciting yeah well i'm sure you're uh, you're happy to be playing at home though uh, being able to host a sectional is, is extra special and uh, the familiarity of, of your guys going through their normal routine and stuff getting ready for the game has got to help you <clears throat> yeah we we are looking forward to you know be able to walk in here um kind of at our at our time and you know, be able to do all routine, and uh, you know, I've got my coaches already doing some scouting for me right now as I'm talking on the radio, and we've got practice going on here, in, you know, about an hour or so, and uh, just kind of get get the flow going. Well, Coach, uh, want to wish you the best of luck. Congratulations on your first regional crown there last night, and uh, hope you have many more to come. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate what you guys do, and and I utilize the uh, AreaSports.net uh, videos all the time. All right. All righty. Glad we can be of service. Jeff, have a good weekend, all right? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. You bet. Bye-bye. Bye. That's Jeff Herman. He is the new first-year coach there at uh, Gallatin County. And, yeah, pretty cool to come in your first year and win a regional championship. Yeah, you know, and uh, like you said, uh, you got to cherish those moments because there's no guarantees that you're going <laughs> to be back there doing that next year. But I can relate to him. You know, here you are, you're on the bus, you're going through town, you're having the parade, and everybody's celebrating with you, and, and one of your players says, Coach, get off the phone yeah, and, and enjoy this. But, again, he's trying to go ahead and start prepping for the next phase and trying to line up game film and scouting reports, you know, on his next opponent, and that's just – that's part of what a coach does. Yeah, you know, uh, it's, it's a shame that those guys can't really enjoy it more than mm-hmm. they do, but uh, – the next one is what drives them. Yeah. Well, and I think, uh, you know, that's probably, you know, you, you got to wonder how somebody like Pete Gordon feels this morning, you know, from Thompsonville. I mean, that, that was a tough loss last night and, you know, kind of a, a bitter defeat for him, so to speak. But, uh, you know, after this is all over and, and you have a chance to let the pain subside a little bit, they're going to reflect back on this season and and realize what they did was just incredible winning 30 games well how special it was you yeah. know i mean it, uh they just done a lot of things that their team's never done uh mm-hmm. they've won some tournaments uh they were gec champs uh you know it's just uh sometimes we get broke down about what happened the last time but when you look set back and look at the big picture you think wow this is pretty special you're right, and you know they'll have a a nice framed up picture, maybe a poster. I don't know of something that they'll have in that school in that gym. And uh, I'm telling you, I, that may never happen again. There may never be another team uh, come through Thompsonville and win 30 games. I mean, it's the first time anything like that's ever happened. And so every time that those young men go back in that school as they get older and become adults, and you know they become. Uh, fathers and husbands and stuff themselves and they walk back at gym and there's that picture of that you know 2018 2019 team that went 30 and 3 that will be something that they will uh, be proud of they'll never forget and like i said those guys are all going to have this special bond together because of what what they went through together well you know and uh when i spoke with jerry warren last night about the honor he had uh, naming the court after him and stuff that was one of the things he hit on randy is that he's to the stage of his coaching career. Uh, he's had some health issues. Uh, he told me next season will probably be his last season just because of the health issues. But when he, he said it kind of really hit me when they called and asked him if he would accept this honor. Mm-hmm. 
he said, I kind of sat back and thought about all the special kids and all the special teams and mm-hmm. all the great parents. Yeah. Uh, he said, you don't realize it as you're going through it, but years later you sit back and you think, you know, this wasn't too bad a ride. <laughs> yeah, that is right. Wow. Okay. Well, we are about out of time. Uh, we uh, got to sign off here and uh, wrap the show up, but we appreciate uh, everybody joining us this morning uh, on the show. Uh, certainly a great group of guests, Coach Scott Malkaravy, Brian Gamber, uh, Shane Garner, Doug Creel, Wayne Harry, and Jeff Herman. Uh, all six were winners last night and uh, just uh, great coaches and great men to talk to. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, just a great group of people, and you're – honored that your kid can play for people like that yeah absolutely we will uh, be letting you know just keep watching area sports.net for an announcement uh, on the website and on our facebook page as to what our uh, plans are as far as broadcasting next week uh, again we were waiting for a word back from uh, the ihsa on confirmation of a couple of different things but uh, we're probably going to be somewhere next week uh, we'll be somewhere yeah and we'll let you know exactly where and who we're covering so that uh, you can uh, you can't make the trip to some of these games perhaps you can join in with us too all right all right that's going to wrap things up for uh, this episode of the sports couch and again we'll do it again next saturday morning at 8 30 it's uh, always local sports talk each and every saturday morning here both on 90.9 the vine and on area sports.net have yourself a great weekend stay tuned for more positive hit music coming up next at 10 o'clock mark wells will be in here on the vine so long everybody Positive Hits 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine. Sing to me, baby, in your native tongue. Sing the word.